Principal Poy will, Tosh will do it. Open a quick comment, raise your hand, keep them up for me so I don't miss you. How you doing, y'all? I'm uh, Tosh, and I'm uh, fired up to be here. <laughs> so I'm waiting on you guys. Okay, we'll start with, woo, that was quick. We'll start with Charlie. Keep your hands up, guys. <laughs> Coach Davis said that he's wanted Mac Wilson to be the guy on defense. As someone that's going to communicate with him a lot this fall, how have you seen him kind of raise that leadership role? Yeah, I think Mac Wilson is one of amongst many that um, we're, uh, we're testing every day and uh, would love to see him um, continue um, to strive and continue um, towards a leadership role in our defense. Okay, we'll go right here with Dwayne. Oh, no, obviously on the on the other side of that, Dylan Moses showed flashes throughout when he, when he got out on the field. Uh, what's the progress you've seen from him and, and him and Mac, obviously, as a tandem? How do you see that working? You know, Dylan Moses, is a, he, he's got um, plenty of, of talent. He's made up of the right stuff. Um, he's a competitor, and um, he's someone, I, I think, as he continues to develop um, and, and um, gains the confidence as he uh, really um, continues to know his assignments and he's able to communicate out there and feel confident about what he's doing, that um, he can step into that role as well as, as to lead by action as well as vocally. We're on the left side with uh, Matt. Coach Saban was talking a little bit about working with you just to help prepare you for, I obviously, this opportunity and responsibilities that come along with it. but. Hey, aside from that, or along with that, just we would spend the, the work behind the scenes for you just to prepare yourself for what's obviously a new responsibility and a new role. Yeah, well, I'm tremendously blessed to be in this position and fortunate uh, to have Coach Saban instill the faith uh, in myself and, and the staff that we have here. And I think we're all in this together. So I've, uh, you know, with, with the many great coaches that I've been blessed to work with here for the last uh, four seasons. Um, and of course, under Coach Saban's leadership and um, tutelage, I'm, I'm here to, you know, we're, we're learning every day, just like we demand of our players. So just like, shoot, this morning, waking up, and well, I love this occupation so much because it really provides that to continue to grow and learn. And uh, that's what we're doing every day here. So as far as, you know, preparation here every single day, you know, morning, night, um, um, you know, working within the coverage assignments and adjustments, so um, we can make sure that we uh, teach things to the players correctly and, um, and uh, clearly, and um, hopefully that will uh, show up out on the field. Go here in the front right, middle right with Ben. You've had some other opportunities to be defensive coordinator in other programs. What made you decide that this was the opportunity that you wanted? Well, um, you know, when, when I was fortunate enough to come here in the beginning, came here for a reason, and that's, you know, one, to be at the Mecca of college football and to um, be coaching um, with and under, you know, one of the best coaches ever to live. So um, that's really the same answer as far as no matter what title I have is the fact that um, we're in an environment here um, where you get challenged every day, um, the most competitive environment that there is, I believe, at, at the college football stage. And, um, you know, just, just a constant environment of, of growing and learning, um, which I love to do. Back here with Aaron. Last year we saw a few freshmen make a difference and have a role on the offense. Is this the kind of year we could see that on the defensive side of the ball? Possibly. You know, we're, we're trying to um, find out that exact answer. So, you know, when we go out there and approach this, it's more so, as many people would refer to a, a depth chart, it's more so a organizational chart, you know, where everybody's going to get um, opportunities and reps to go out there and execute. And as we go from a every single meeting, walk through to practice out there, that's exactly what we're doing is trying to find out um, per personnel, per situation of getting the absolute best players out there on the field like we traditionally have. Um, you know, in every sin season since I've been here, you know, I, I believe we've never played less than 17 true freshmen, you know, in a season. So I believe that's more so just about getting the right players, the best players out there no matter what you look like or what your age is. Come back here in front left with uh, Chris Walsh. 
two things, please. Um, first, what's the biggest challenge of going from a coach who didn't call plays to being one who does? Um, well, it's just uh, doing it um, in a speedy manner, I believe. You know, you've got to process the information quicker. Um, I, I feel like a, as an assistant, um, one where I've had some um, opportunities in the past where I might be able to do some play calling has, has helped to do it full time. Um, and uh, but we, you got to do it as fast as possible to react and try to put the, the guys in the best possible position. So, uh, but like anything, I think through repetition, you know, you start to um, get a little more confident and better. And then also just understanding more so um, situational football of how we apply our defense. You know, so that's what this is for. And camp is for and spring ball and you know the last whatever it's been seven eight months of practicing to um, make sure um, we can do that as best as we can. And secondly, last year after the opener when you lost so many linebackers, um, were there a lot of adjustments that had to be made to the pass rush just in general? Did you kind of have to start from scratch? Well, I, I think, um, you know, it's always, we're going to do our best to utilize what personnel we have when it comes to a subject such as pressuring the quarterback. So if that means that, um, you know, we don't have as gifted or our better rushers have been injured, then we might have to do some stuff and, and make um, do some creative things where we bring a guy like Mika Fitzpatrick as we did more so than we might have in the past. Um, and then of course the personnel driven, if you got guys that you feel like you can affect the quarterback up front. Um, but regardless, you know, we'd always like to be versatile in our system and, and put the guys that are gonna do each job well in those positions. Being a team effort running this defense, but how do you anticipate game days going as far as play calling? You know, duties are, are divvied up, and you know, how much are you personally looking forward to this opportunity of kind of calling not necessarily your own defense, but calling those plays? Yeah, I'm, I'm again tremendously excited and, and um, for this opportunity to be doing this here. So, um, again, I'm, uh, we're gonna go out and, and uh, play just like we practice. So, you know, uh, doing our best to get these individuals in the right positions and having all 11 guys play together and how fast I can distribute the call and communicate the call um, and, um, you know, have them operating to the standard within that call. Here with Tony on the right. Going back to inside linebacker, outside of Moses and, and Wilson, what have you seen from some of the younger players there? And also, Nick Saban talked about moving maybe outside linebackers to kind of build depth. Is that something that you're looking at? And is there any players that you, you feel could do that? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we, we do have a very versatile defense where we do a lot of concepts within the 3-4 defense as well as 4-3 concepts. So I think the great thing about that is the versatility is a lot of individuals that play outside backer may have the ability to play inside. And just like we've done from Reggie Ragland to uh, Rashawn Evans and, and others in the past where inside backers can also play outside. So um, having the versatility within our system at least allows us to be able to move some guys around as opposed to maybe some other defenses where you're kind of the position what you play and a little bit, um, you know, for lack of better terms, stuck in your position. We're able to move guys around and, and tie in concepts that make sense where I think we can um, be in the position to get our best personnel out there. Middle right with uh, Joseph. Tosh, Nick emphasized toughness during his opening remarks. Are there some years in fall camp where you need to be tougher, camp needs to be tougher than other years, and is this one of those years? Well, I think it's um, maybe not necessarily um, depending on the year of how tough you are, but more so of how much you emphasize, you know. It is what it is. We've got a lot of um, new faces out there, and I think it's uh, – it's, it's very important to have a constant reminder of what it takes to operate at the standard that's been here. And that's what we're trying to do every single day. So with, with a lot of guys that, um, you know, it, it's not like we're returning every starter. You know, we have a lot of guys in the fold here that we're testing every day to see who can be tough enough to play in this conference and, and uh, practice how we practice and, and um, um, you know, prepare the right way. We'll go on the back of Steven. Coach, you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of relationships with these, with these outside linebackers. One of the guys happens to be Jamie Mosley. 
What has set him apart? What has he uh, meant to this team? And how have you seen him grow? I know he's coming behind his brother, CJ. What have you seen from Jamie that makes him stand out? Well, I think it, it all starts with his preparation um, and his desire to be great. You know, Jamie Mosley has, has, has the respect of his teammates, has the respect of the whole team um, because of the way he goes about every day, the way he prepares, um, um, the way he, he strives to be a technician. And uh, so he's been able to put himself in the position to be a major contributor at times for us, um, like we've already seen last season, and, and rose to the occasion um, um, when, we, when we've asked you know, for him to go out there and compete for us. Come back over here with Reiner on the left side. Nick has typically promoted uh, uh, coaches to defensive coordinator with a secondary background. How much, how, how comfortable are you with the coverage schemes, and has it been the biggest learning curve for you to, you know, in, in the process of becoming defensive coordinator? Yeah, I think you know before before coming to Alabama, um, in one way or another, it's it our it had always been um, uh, somewhat of a part of my responsibility, whether working with one outside backer, you know, within the schemes I had came from. That was a major goal of mine of four seasons ago is, is to come here and, and to, to try to grow as much as possible and learn you know from the best in the business when it comes to the coverage concept. So I think that process started um, when I came here to Alabama and, um, and now um, you know I've gained a lot of confidence in that, but of course I'm still getting better and learning it every single day. So um, but that's something that um, you know it's, it's um, grown on me and, and something I take a lot of pride in is, is trying to uh, know something there that might have not been, you know, five to ten years ago, something that um, wasn't the strength of uh, my knowledge of the game. Two more. We'll start with Ken Rogers. Coach, you guys lost all five starters in the secondary. I'm wondering, you know, is there a bell cow back there that, that you'll be counting on to kind of teach other guys uh, mm -hmm. what's going on? or? Or, or does that group need one? Yeah, I think that that's the process every day we're trying to find right now. You know, so um, to me, I, I'm excited about this opportunity. I know they are too. Where you know we did lose six, you know, um, DBs to the NFL. That's no secret. And and um, you know these guys. What I notice about them is their hunger um, uh, upon their approach. You know, the way these guys are dialed in in meetings. The way the guys were. Um, that, that's very apparent to me so far. You know, we've only been out there for one day. So, um, but these guys are hungry to get out there. It's a competitive group, and and that fires me up. You know, we're all going to feed off of that to see who can prepare, who can compete, and and what it takes to break these guys as far as their preparation on that mission of who's going to contribute for us. Last one up front here, Richard. Coach, uh, you obviously wanted to learn under Nick Saban, as you said, one of the greatest coaches to ever do it, but you were also very fortunate to be a part of a high school program with Bob Lassiter, who arguably could be the greatest high school coach ever. Are you still in touch with him, and how big an influence has he had on your career? And then second question, with a young player like Yabi and Noma after the injury to Terrell Lewis, how quickly do you get him acclimated and where you can get him comfortable to go out and play instinctively and not think? All right, so there's a two-part question. <laughs> so addressing the first one, um, yeah, there's no doubt I'm in constant contact with Bob Lasser. Um, I have tremendous respect for him. You know, he, he's someone where, you know, he represents a school at De La Salle that um, in many ways has raised me, you know. So I was a ball boy at De La Salle when I was, I think, eight years old or something. My brother was there before me. So the principles and values of that program and what Bob Lasser represents, um, there's a lot of carryover here. At Alabama, and um, the obvious um, training of strong character, integrity, and what how you approach life off the field, and then how that's demonstrated on the field, um, and the benefits of that. That to me it shows up every day here. So I think they have a lot of similarities. I know they've spoken on a number of occasions as well in the past, um, and Coach Latticer has been around here before. So um, that that's that's tremendously obvious to me of, to see two um, individuals that represent um, the same values there. Um, as far as the, the second question, you know, with Terrell, um, he's, he's battling his butt off to get back, just like last season. I wouldn't be surprised um, if he surprises you 
as far as you know at what time he is back for us um, but um, you know obviously we went through it last year in the opener you know we lost four starting linebackers in one game and uh, that's why we do what we do here that's why we repair that's why we um, go about practice the way we do that's why Iyabi, Cameron Latu, Jalen Moody, whoever it is, is going to get the same amount of reps as any so-called number one or starter every day. Uh, nobody's standing around watching these guys for that reason. So if you or when you have the opportunity to get out there and contribute, you will be ready. Okay. Thanks, Todd. All right. Thanks Thank a lot. You.